Good morning and welcome to this special celebration for Ash Wednesday. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Friends in Christ, since early days Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so grow in faith and devotion to the Lord. I invite you therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a Holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Holy Word. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King of glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And that whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces to show to others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, 
so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At first glance, today's reading from Matthew's Gospel seems a strange one for Ash Wednesday, or indeed, strange for any day on which Christians gather for worship. Indeed, the initial impression you get from today's reading is that it carries a bias in favour of private prayer and worship over public expressions of faith. Taken to its logical conclusion, it might be argued that today's passage is wholly supportive of the kind of thing people mean when they say, I'm spiritual but not religious. The privatisation of spirituality is a common phenomenon these days and it occurs at two levels. The first is the syncretistic. This is when people pick and choose from individual faith traditions and spiritual practices in order to construct their own spirituality, not reflecting a desire to engage with the divine, but more often than not, a reflection of the author's own desires and expectations. The second kind of privatisation is separatist. This is the division of one's life into private and public, with spirituality falling into the sphere of the private, having no connection whatsoever with the realm of the public, no wider purpose or meaning for life or for the world. However, the problem with the privatisation of spirituality is that it misunderstands the nature of the word secular. Secular does not mean the exclusion of religious beliefs from the life of society and their confinement to the realm of private individual belief. On the contrary, secular, properly understood, means the inclusion of all religious beliefs as part of the totality of belief systems within society, including non-theist and atheist beliefs and their participation with those other segments of society in social discourse. In other words, it's perfectly consistent with secularism to hold a religious view and to be motivated by that belief and the worldview which it inspires to an engagement in the life of the wider society. Unfortunately, Christians are as guilty as anyone when it comes to swallowing this misconstrued understanding of secular. Consequently, Christians have generally withdrawn from social discourse, confining themselves to the traditional sectors of charitable work and social justice activity. The result of this has been twofold. Firstly, society has disconnected from us as we, in turn, have withdrawn from society. And secondly, those Christian voices that have remained vocal and which tend to capture public attention now represent only a narrow, sectionalist interest and not the broader diversity of Christian opinion. As a result, Christians everywhere have become increasingly stereotyped and marginalised. So in light of today's reading from Matthew's Gospel, how are we to respond if we wish to engage in a Christian way of life that includes robust engagement with the rest of society? The first thing we must do is to understand that this passage is not talking about a private-public dichotomy, but a matter of authenticity. Indeed, what it cautions against is the kind of inauthenticity that can occur at both the individual and communal levels. Any activity which is undertaken not because it is a faithful act of discipleship to Christ, but because it might bring in more money or attract more people or because it might generate positive publicity or even just to assert the supposedly Christian credentials of one individual or community over the other is inauthentic. 
It is done with an ulterior motive. Take a non-religious example. It is like one of the gala events which we are constantly see in the news media. While these events undoubtedly raise significant funds for charities, they do an even better job of raising the publicity of celebrities and socialites who attend. Ultimately, the purpose of such events is not to do good, but to be seen and recognised. They exist in order to flatter egos and facilitate ambition. So when Jesus counsels us to pray quietly and to fast or give alms discreetly, what he is saying is simply act with authenticity. We are being counseled to act with integrity, motivated not by any thought of personal gain, but by the very integrity of our faith, which calls us to act in discipleship of Christ. Of course, none of us is this pure. There will always be elements of self-interest in everything we do. But this gospel passage recognises this very human trait when it talks about storing treasures in heaven. It is talking about humility, the quality of self-awareness that honestly recognises our faults and failings, and which, through prayer and repentance, we come before God seeking reconciliation and healing. Repentance is a vital process of communication that sustains the relationship between God and humanity. We say, I'm sorry, not because we want to avoid retribution, but because we want to overcome that within ourselves which comes between us and God, and which damages our relationship with God. Only when we have this humility will we be able to avoid the kind of conceit and arrogance that causes us to act inauthentically, which causes us to seek the rewards of earthly existence as opposed to the joy of a genuine relationship with God. For the treasure in heaven is a relationship with God which, despite all our faults and failings, is honest and robust and life-sustaining, and which ultimately enables us to act authentically in the world. And that is why we are here today, as people who, in humility, approach God open-handedly, seeking renewal and the strengthening of our relationship. A renewal that will in turn enable us to overcome the pernicious fallacy of a privatised faith, that will enable us to act with integrity and authenticity in the realm of human affairs. An integrity and authenticity that will, in and of itself, make plain for all the good news that the Kingdom of God is indeed present here on earth. Amen. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God our Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy on us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from evil hatred and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness, and love of money,
from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fasting and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Give us true repentance, forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your Holy Word. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Let us pray together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Dear friends, I invite you in the name of the Church to the observance of a Holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Holy Word. As a sign of our beginning, and as a mark of our repentance and mortality, we would normally bless and then receive the imposition of ashes. Due to the current pandemic lockdown, you will receive these Ash Wednesday cards at our next physical service, reminding us that we are created by you out of dust of the earth. Bless these cards that they may call to our minds that it is only by your precious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Remember you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for us upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, who worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Each time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Almighty God, you have given your Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. 
Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these his inestimable gifts and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of the Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore your sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.